Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome to the first video of the entire series that I'm going to create for Azure AD Advanced Troubleshooting. Now, I have already covered a lot more content in the playlist that I've already created for the channel, but that's more over related to the admin perspective of Azure AD, the features of Azure AD like conditional access, SSPR and n number of things. But this video is intended for advanced troubleshooting of Azure AD. This entire playlist will have a different content altogether. And the only thing which I will try is to be as much as descriptive as possible. Now, I know that the videos that I post, they are comparatively long compared to any other videos that you guys might see in some other channel or from some other resource. But the only agenda which I have is to make you guys understand how exactly everything works. And I can assure you that if you will watch this entire playlist, which I will be completing in a month or so time, you will know Azure AD in and out. And it's not only the admin part that I'm going to cover. I'm also going to cover the part or the concepts, how a developer thinks, which information is important for developer. And if you are developer, then you are at the right place because I will let you know how an admin thinks. So I'm going to cover both the parts so that both the type of audience should be able to know how they should interact for a specific requirement. So let's say, if you are a developer, what set of questions you should ask from your customer? If you are a customer, what question you should ask from your application vendor team? So I'm going to cover both the sides. So have patience, watch this entire playlist and you will know everything. Before I proceed, one sincere thank you to all of you who have subscribed for this membership program and showing the support on my channel. I'll try to raise or maintain the quality content that I deliver in each and every video. But if you guys have something to share with me, please use the comment section in any of the video, be it membership or be it the normal videos which are available on the channel. Now, since this will be the first video of the entire series, as I've said before, I'm trying to do a groundwork so that you should know both the sides and you should know the core concepts because if you don't know the core concepts, you will not be able to troubleshoot the advanced capabilities which a solution like Azure AD has to offer. The next thing that I will be talking about is what are the different endpoints are used by different kind of applications depending upon the protocols that a particular application vendor is using. Now, then we'll talk about what are the different application types, okay? In which scenario the resources are shared or in which scenario is the resource that is again protected by Azure AD. And the last thing that I will be talking about in this particular video is in which condition as a developer, you should use a particular protocol to get the best results. Now, this series has a certain prerequisites and there is a reason behind that. Now, I have already covered SaaS from an Azure AD perspective in a lot more detail and there are almost three videos which already exist in the channel. And if you have not watched that video, please go ahead and watch them because I have tried to do a groundwork in terms of explaining what were the traditional methods for identity, likewise local identities or claim-based identity model. And I have also created a series for OAuth, wherein I have completed authorization grant. Now, the next step from there I will be covering here, but I would highly recommend you guys to watch those two series first and then watch this video and you will be able to relate each and everything. Now there is a small help also that I need from you guys and that is it is really important for you to share the feedback 
because then only the content will get improved so if you think that i am missing something or if you have any question use comment section like anything i respond to each and every question those of you who are already asking questions they know that i will respond to all of your questions so please feel free to ask and let's use this as a community to have better discussions in terms of discussing issues which are not common or which you have seen for the first time so use the comment section of every video be it the membership be it the videos which are already available in the channel and i will answer all the questions so this is a sort of work that i'm doing to let you know guys that you're paying something make use of it and without any delay now let's proceed in understanding everything so the very first thing which i would like to cover here and that is kind of applications and how the architectural view of an application looks like and in which purpose what kind of function an azure ad is going to do so think about a scenario wherein you are developing an application and you want to use Azure AD because Azure AD can do identity as a service. It's your Azure AD which is holding the user accounts and it's your Azure AD which is providing a token to your application, right? But think about a scenario that the application that you are developing is a cloud storage application. That means it's your resources, you have your own data center. All you need is an authentication token from Azure AD, and then you can present a specific profile to your user with the limited cloud storage that you have aligned. So what you have to understand that in this kind of scenario, it's your application which is holding the resources and all you need from Azure AD is an authentication token that will contain certain claims. Now, this is related to claim based identity model that any attribute that belongs to a user object can be sent as a claim in the token that will be consumed by your application. Now, this idea is not new. You have many applications available in the market that are already doing this for you. Likewise, Box. Okay. One more example of this kind of. Uh, resource based sharing is Salesforce. It's a CRM portal, right? Now think about this as a developer perspective that what you need is just an authentication token, right? You're not going to access any resource that is protected by Azure AD because you have your own resources. You have your own data center. So in this kind of scenario, what is being majorly observed or what is there as of now in the market application prefers to use saml or ws fed because it's just that you need a security token on behalf of which you will create a profile for a particular user now this kind of applications are called resource oriented applications now you will not get this term listed in any of the microsoft article i'm just trying to explain you guys how you should relate things or how you should address or how you should understand that what could be a reason behind using a specific protocol. Now, we know that SAML and WS Fed, these are legacy protocols. They have been used by an application vendors for so long. In fact, there are many applications which still use these protocols. It's just the purpose is different, okay? Now, these protocols, they don't have any authorization layer, which was introduced in OAuth and OpenID Connect. Now, this is something which is the entry point for us to understand in which situation you should use OAuth and OpenID Connect, right? So think about a scenario wherein you have an application. Obviously, you need authentication from Azure AD because it's the Azure AD where the user object exists, right? But once the user is authenticated, the resources that your application is going to access is again protected by Azure AD. Likewise, Microsoft Graph. So Microsoft Graph is an API with which you can access any information. Now, just to give you a slight overview here or a brief overview about Microsoft Graph, there is a protocol named as OData. Okay, 
and Microsoft Graph is the REST API which can be queried to get some set of information. Now the reason why I have mentioned O data because when you will do uh, you know when you will try to check any object type that exists in Azure AD you will get a response where it will be mentioned O data. Now I'm just taking all these terms as of now here but I will be covering all this in a lot more detail. So as of now just think about this second example wherein your application let's let's consider this with an example that here the purpose of your application is to show a notification of how many emails are there in the mailbox which are not read or which are unread okay so in this case you will be accessing the apis that are protected by microsoft graph right so the first fundamental of your application is you'll contact azure ad you'll get the user authenticated but then again you are accessing an api that's been protected again by azure ad now in these kind of scenarios oauth and open id connect is used majorly because oauth and open id connect they have consent framework right there is an authorization layer now my only intent to explain you guys about these two categories of resource oriented and resource dependent application is that i'm going to showcase you a specific statement just make sure that you memorize this statement because when i will be covering details about these two protocols it is going to make a lot more sense okay so in cases wherein your application is resource dependent the very first request that you will send to azure ad right in that authentication request you have to mention the reference of the resource which you are going to access now if you read this statement at once what does this actually mean the authentication request which an application is sending to azure ad will have a reference of what information application is going to access that means azure ad can protect n number of resources right but when you are requesting a token when you are requesting an authorization you should let the azure ad know what kind of resource your application is going to access so these are two different types of applications the first one was resource oriented wherein the resource belongs to the application vendor itself that means you as a developer and the other one is resource dependent applications wherein you your application will get an authentication token but again you're going to access some information that has been protected by azure ad now let's take a step back and understand some more basics because this is something which will be the entry point of our next video so before your application can even send the first redirect request to azure ad what you have to make sure that azure ad or a specific tenant of azure ad will be added or must be added on your side as a claim provider that means i am developing an application and i'm developing that application for a specific customer now my application should send a request to a specific endpoint of a specific tenant that belongs to my customer so in that case there is a lot more configuration that i have to do as a developer i have to use certain libraries right just to name them as of now, I may be using ADAL or MCEL. I will be covering this in a lot more detail, but as of now, just understand that you are developing an application, which is let's say app.conceptswork.com. Now, as a user, when I go to app.conceptswork.com and when I click on login button, the authentication request should reach to a specific Azure ADs endpoint, right? Now, once the request has been received the user is authenticated azure ad will send a response back 
to your application. Now what we have to understand here that there is an interaction happening between your application and your Azure AD, right? Now, depending upon the protocols that your application is using, right? There will be different endpoints which will be accessed. So if you guys remember, for SAML and WS Fed application, we used to share federation metadata, right? It's a common keyword that exists since ADFS and it's the common keyword that's been used globally with all the identity providers that if your application, think about like this, that you are a developer, if your application is using WS Fed or SAML, you need the federation metadata. But in case of OAuth and OpenID Connect, there is something called well-known configuration. Now that's nothing new. It's the same set of information. Likewise, which endpoints are available for a specific tenant? What are the scopes that are available that can be requested? It's the same set of information. It's just a different term which has been used. So now, if you are an admin and any application vendor contacts you and asks you that I want to use your Azure AD as an identity provider for my application, the first question that you have to ask is tell me which protocol you're going to use. Okay. But if you are a developer, what you have to make sure that you have already decided which libraries you are going to use or which protocol you are going to use. Because think about like this, as a developer, you cannot have authentication method user specific. Now, what do I mean by this? That for some users, my application should use SAML and for some users, my application should use OAuth or OpenID Connect. That's not possible because you are going to develop or you're going to write a code or a specific set of lines for an authentication handler that you're going to design, right? So you have to make sure or you should decide this first that which protocol you're going to use for your application, get the code implemented and then contact your customers and say that I'm going to use your Azure AD as an identity provider and the protocol that I'm going to use will be OpenID Connect for an example or will be SAML. So this is the entry point for both the sides, be it admin or be it the developer, to know which protocol I'm going to use and how the interaction is going to happen between the identity provider, which is Azure AD, and the application. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my browser and show you guys where to find this information. So, this is something which I have already covered in SaaS playlist but still I'll show here because the options are changed a lot so as an admin you can go to Azure AD and then click on app registration and do not register any app as of now just click on this option which says endpoints the moment you will click on this option this is the list of all the endpoints for which Azure AD can receive requests now, if your application vendor says that I want to use SAML or WS Fed, then give them this particular link, which is the federation metadata. And this has the details for SAML endpoints and the claims that can be issued. So the first thing that you see here is SAML 2.0 metadata. And if you will come at the bottom of this, you see all these endpoints which are listed here as SAML endpoints. But if your application vendor says that I'm going to use either OpenID Connect or OAuth, then what you have to do is you have to give this particular link, which is OpenID Connect metadata document. Now, if I open this link, you can see I'm getting the list of all the endpoints. Now, those of you who have already completed the OAuth playlist, they will be able to relate this because there are two type of endpoints which are used in OAuth and OpenID Connect. The first one is authorized and the other one is token endpoint. So as you can see, the moment you will access this particular endpoint detail, 
you'll get all the endpoints which are available likewise token endpoint and then authorize endpoint what are the scopes that can be requested so this is just the first step that you are doing as an admin providing the federation metadata or providing the endpoint details to your application vendor the next step will be registration of an application that I will be covering in the next video but just to make this thing relatable to you guys this information is public now what do I mean by this that you can access the federation metadata of any Azure AD now why do I I'm saying like this that if you see this address bar there is a grid here this grid is actually the grid of my directory but let's say if I type Microsoft.com I can access the endpoints of Microsoft's directory or you can replace this with any domain that exists in Azure AD and you will get the relative information so as of now if I type my domain let's say conceptswork.com you see I'm accessing a different information now and this does apply to the WS Fed and SAML endpoints as well so if I go here and now type let's say microsoft.com I'm accessing the federation metadata of Microsoft's tenant so if I come down you can see that this good that is getting listed now is Microsoft's tenant quid now there is one more thing uh, which I would like to cover here and that is if you guys have read some information related to v 2.0 or v1 endpoints so it's basically the versioning of the endpoints that has been done so all these v1 endpoints this support adal whereas this v2.0 endpoints this support msal now the basic difference between adal and msal is that with adal so if you are a developer you make you can use either azure ad authentication libraries or microsoft authentication libraries adal stands for azure ad and msal stands for microsoft authentication libraries now the basic difference between these two libraries is that if you are using adal then you can only get the users authenticated which exist in a particular directory in a particular azure ad but if you use msal then you can get the users authenticated which have microsoft account as well likewise live outlook or hotmail you know these are the different set of options which are available as of now so you have to make sure that when you're writing code you know you should be using a specific authentication library and then you can choose these endpoints now from an admin perspective this is something which has to be taken care of by your application vendor itself but there is a decision making process that belongs to you that for a specific application that you are adding in your tenant what kind of users you would allow to sign in that particular application which is again I'm covering in the next video because over there I will be talking about app registration now there is no rocket science there is nothing complicated in terms of checking the well-known configuration for v1 or v2 endpoints it's absolutely simple and I'll show you how so this link that you get here is v2.0 endpoints well-known configuration right if I copy this and if I go to other tab and I access this I'm getting v2.0 endpoints list and just observe one basic difference that for every endpoint I'm getting this v2.0 right you see this I'm getting v2.0 now all I have to do is I have to delete this v2.0 that's it this is the v1 endpoints so everything is very simple all you have to do is you have to relate the concepts that what could be the purpose of v1.0 endpoints or what could be the purpose of v2.0 endpoints now microsoft is pushing like anything for 
everyone to migrate to v2.0 endpoints but there are certain limitations for v2.0 endpoints which i will be covering in a lot more detail when i will be talking about adal and msal respectively so just to summarize this endpoint part once again if your application is using WS Fed and SAML, you have to share the federation metadata specifically mentioned in the endpoint section. If your application is going to use OAuth and OpenID Connect, then choose the well-known configuration. And this is the part which can be customized depending upon the versions that you want to use and your developer want to use. Now, one more very basic thing which I have addressed before as well, and that is all you have to do is you have to replace this GUID part with any of the domain and you will get the respective set of information for either WS Fed SAML or OAuth or OpenID Connect. So I have covered a lot more detail about the application type, the endpoints, and this is very, very basic because if your application is sending a let's say query to this particular endpoint and by mistake they are they have embedded a wrong GUID or they are querying a wrong domain the request will not go through okay so these are very small small things which you should know and it's a must know information for you to actually segregate where will be the issue is it the Azure AD or is it the application so now let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this first video It's the basic core concepts that we have discussed about how the applications operate and What are the different endpoints that you should give to your application vendor and in which case? What kind of protocol is used now as I've said before that since the experience of app registration has been changed like anything the next video I'm targeting to add an application first and then we'll move on with authentication troubleshooting so thank you so much guys thanks for your time if you have any feedback any question use comment section and if you have learned something new please feel free to share my videos with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time